Hi, this is Ron Roland for Money and Markets TV. Last month, I told you why European unity has always been an illusion. Now, the sovereign debt crisis seems to be entering a new and even more ominous phase. A Greek default has become a real possibility, and Italy, Spain, and Portugal are in big trouble too. I expect more twists and plenty of market action as this crisis plays out in the coming weeks. That makes short-term trading extremely difficult. But I do want to mention three important points that all ETF investors should be aware of. Point number one, the euro currency is at a crossroads. It's becoming painfully clear to Europeans that they can't have a common currency and independent governments. Incentivizing weaker nations to spend while sticking stronger ones with the bill is not feasible in the long run. The European Union has to either get much stronger or disappear completely. In practice, a stronger EU would mean Germany and France taking charge of Greece, Italy, Spain, and everyone else. In that scenario, the euro could conceivably survive, but it would probably face the sharp evaluation. The more likely outcome is for the eurozone to break apart and for individual countries to return to their local currencies. But remember, the 1999 conversion to the euro took years of negotiation and planning. So reversing it all in a hurry will be an extremely messy process. For ETFs, this introduces yet another element of risk to the already weak European stock markets. In the long run, we'll probably see some amazing buying opportunities. But meanwhile, expect capital to seek stability elsewhere. That brings us to point number two. No European stock market is safe. As recently as a few months ago, it looked like parts of Europe might be able to avoid the financial contagion. Eastern Europe and Northern European markets seemed relatively appealing. ETF sponsors responded with offerings like iShares MSCI Poland and Global X FTSE Nordic 30 ETF. These seemed like a good way to stay involved in Europe while the Mediterranean nations sorted out their problems. Unfortunately, even nations that stayed out of the euro, like Switzerland and the UK, have found themselves caught up in the chaos. Poland, Norway, Sweden, the Baltics, none of them have been immune. So right now, I don't see much upside anywhere in European equities. But if you're considering placing a bet against those European equity markets, you may want to think again. Point number three is that inverse and leveraged ETFs may not work like you think. In fact, an inverse ETF can do just as much damage to your portfolio as a long ETF if you move a day early or a day late. Your timing has to be near perfect. Plus, all inverse and leveraged ETFs depend on derivatives to achieve the desired market exposure. That means counterparty risk. Normally, that doesn't worry me too much, but with major banks on the edge of collapse and the currency itself liable to unravel, it's just another variable you'd be wise to avoid. So, where should you put your money? Very few traditional asset classes, European or otherwise, look bullish right now. The US dollar and short-term treasury bills are the most liquid safe havens, but you can't expect much yield from them. So in terms of actual growth, I think gold has more momentum than anything else. That's why it's still a cornerstone of the defense plan for subscribers to my international ETF trader service. However, I am concerned that we could see a sharp correction from recent gains. So you have to be ready to move fast. But if you're willing to take the plunge, the Spider Gold Trust and iShares Gold Trust are the most popular gold-based ETFs. I'm Ron Rowland for Money and Markets. Thank you for watching.